be able to film this all today. I pre-prepped these strips. I measured under the running board where I want them to be. Cut them where you're supposed to cut them across the contacts. And then I use clear silicone on the end to make sure that those contacts don't come into, uh, don't touch any metal and short out the entire string. So after you cut these to your length, you want to make sure you silicone the ends of them just to protect those contacts from your LED. So normally these would be a three foot LED light strip. Look like that. And these particular ones come with a male and female end. So you could daisy chain them together if you wanted. But in most cases what you'll end up doing is measuring the best place on your running board where you can get the most continuous length without obstruction and then cutting it to length. So I did get 36 inches in a strip and I cut mine down to 27 inches which met the space I had on my running board before I came into a bend or a turn. So I'm going to have 27 inch lights. I have already mounted these with tape on the snowmobile. Uh, they light up. You know, you're not really missing anything with this added length being gone. This would just stretch out as far as you need it to go. So it doesn't make it any brighter per se to have a longer strip. It just gives you the coverage you need to the back of the sled. This takes me all the way to the back of the sled. So really this is extra. Um, in the future I could use it to connect up and light a small section if I needed to. But for right now, we're just going to run the running board extension. So in effect, this is what I'll end up working with and we'll show in the installation. Two LED strips, two Ys. I'll, only, I'll be using both of these Ys, one to come off the control box and one to split once I get down to the running boards. And then the four extensions. Um, and it probably will take all four of those extensions as well. So this is the running board extension kit, 90 LED multifunction remote, uh, multicolor lights. Thank you. And I'm going to put in the Y. Now in this case, actually what I want to do is I want to make sure that these wires run behind this belt. So I'm going to push that through. And I'm going to get my grease. I picked up some dielectric grease. This will just help keep debris, snow, and moisture out of these. So you just squeeze that in there. It's $2 a tube, so it's good insurance. Click that in there. Now I've connected to the remote box, and I have two offshoots on the back. I'm going to bring one back around and reconnect to my original connection which already has grease in it and I'm going to come to the connection now that will go back to the Y's that will be my running board leads so I have this wire now coming back from the back of the sled put some grease in there and take my other lead and connect that. So now what we have is we have our connections. We have this connection here and it will not get close to anything that's hot. And we have our connection here which I am going to blue zip tie. So I'll be right back. I use colored zip ties so that I know which of the zip ties underneath the hood are the ones that I've started. There's a lot of zip ties under the hood. So to make sure that I know which is my project, I take and I use color zip ties. And since the sled is blue, then I'm going to use blue zip ties. So what I'm doing here is I'm zipping this up. So if the camera comes around on this side, you can see here, this is the exhaust. And I'm loose zipping it. I'll tighten up all the zips later, but I'm loose zipping it up so that it doesn't hang down and touch this heat at all. And this other wire has no issue. It's not going to touch the heat. It's wrapped up. Um, so now nothing's obstructing the belt. I can take the belt off if there's an issue. And we're to the back. So the wire's running up here, down through, coming out the back, and is the lead right here. So here's where I'm going to put my other Y. 
very quickly. I'm going to grease this connection. And I'm going to fasten this Y. This Y is now powered to the remote unit. These are the two leads that go to the flex strips. So I'm going to grease and attach those. Now it still looks a little bit you know, of a mess. There's a lot of wires here. But effectively what we've done now in those two easy steps is we created a Y, we established the old connection, and fastened the running board strips. These are the running board strips. Those will go underneath the running board. Um, it is powered up here and on the other side. And so what I will do is turn those on. And you can see with those two connections, what we have now is we have all the prior lights working. The hood, the side, underneath the shock wells. But as you can see, we now have this string, which will go underneath this running board. This way. And the strip on the other side. We walk around real quick. Over here powered up. So what we'll do is we'll pause the camera here and we will finish cinching everything up, take all the slack out, and uh, we'll be good to go. And then later tonight when it's dark, we'll light it up again just like the first video for the engine kit. So this is the running board extension. You saw it happen. Less than 30 minutes. We're almost done. Thanks. Bye. This is the underside of the running board. And you can see we started it right here where it cuts over. There wasn't enough room to do it. There's all kinds of obstacles on the inside. So what we did is we ran it on the outside. And you can see how flush it is. I'm not sure how this macro is going to work, but I'm going to pan this. And you can see how flush that is. I'm going to turn it over here. Don't get sick. All the way over to the beginning. And this is where it'll loop over into the wheel well. So if we pan up here this way, you'll see that that wire, I'm going to silicone the wire. It looks loose now, but it'll all be siliconed up like this. And what that will do is that's protected by the side panel. So this will be siliconed all this length and then protected by the side panel and held in with this this tie down up in here keeps it away from my feet and then up into the the wire that we saw before connecting so if we turn this on real quick whoop, this is what it's going to look like from the ground view and that's essentially it you can see how nice that looks it's hardly exposed. You see on the side. This is a level view. And you can see that there's not really any exposure. We slipped it up underneath that lip. So unlike pods, pods would hang down. Neon tubes hang down. These are right underneath that lip. And pretty well protected. They're very low profile. And they go all the way back to the to the suspension. So we're going to get good coverage uh, and you'll see that later tonight. All right, well we're going to cinch everything up, do the other side, and we'll see you later.